Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us for this public dedication and code designation for the Barbara Jordan Way. I am Veronica Williams, the city, the city, great city of Opelika, vice mayor, and I will serve as your mistress of ceremony today. It is my honor occasion as we cement another facet of the legacy of Commissioner Barbara Jordan. To begin, I would like for you to join me in welcoming the Miami-Dade Police Department Honor Guard, as, which will be followed immediately by the Pledge of Allegiance. with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Join me in bringing to the stage, and this feels so great to see and to say, especially since this being Women's History Month, we have made history here in Miami-Dade County by electing our very first woman mayor. Join me in welcoming to the stage Mayor Daniela Levine Cava. What a glorious day <laughs> to be with all of you to honor my personal hero, the forever Commissioner Barbara Jordan. There is not a day that goes by that I don't wish that this wonderful woman were still on the days. No offense to her replacement, but couldn't we have you both? That would be uh, heaven. <laughs> that would be heaven. And to all of your friends and admirers and your wonderful family, what a glorious day to honor this great, great woman. So Alibaba Avenue, iconic. Thank you, Mayor Iget. Here we are on this iconic street, but now double iconic with a great woman leading the way and naming the street. This is really great. I mean, I think Opelika has definitely uh, turned the page. It's a new chapter for Opelika. Definitely. Very, very exciting. So you have, uh, you know, you all know this wonderful woman and you know that her path has been historic. But just a few things uh, to remind us of the remarkable leadership. Uh, first of all, she is my role model. Yes, indeed, she is. You know, she, we had that little conversation in which she told me she admired my patience. And I said, <laughs> and I admire your passion and toughness. Absolutely. So I aspire to be like you when I grow up. 
So uh, her story of public service and passion for the community uh, reminds us that people can set high, high goals no matter their, uh, their story, and they can achieve uh, great things, especially for communities that have been left behind. And this woman has been a tireless champion for the needs of communities that have been left behind. Yes, ma'am, let's say amen to that. Amen. She graduated from a segregated high school. Who remembers those? Okay, depending on how you look at it, but they're still with us. Uh, to Morris Brown College to get her bachelor's. And uh, I'm a big fan of Morris Brown and uh, had a chance to visit and attend classes there when I lived in Atlanta. She began her career at Miami County when uh, Black families were facing very significant discrimination. And she dedicated her within government from the beginning to lay a stronger, more equal foundation for all of my Miami-Dade County families. And many of you have been with her for many, many years and we've watched her. We've watched her navigate uh, an incredible path through the county to achieve greatness, especially for our young people. And in the office of, I guess, Community Action Agency, it was at the time, uh, empowering our young people, preparing them for financial independence, creating the Greater Miami Service Corps. Uh, I guess they're in the house here, or those who know how wonderful that program is, and helping people to realize their true potential. And then she launched teams throughout Miami Dade County government uh, as assistant county manager. That's when I got to know you first, which is about, you know, 30 years ago. We go back. We do go back. Yes, we do. Overseeing departments, she focused on social and economic prosperity from housing to community action and the Department of Human Services. So her commitment to this community has been unwavering. And ever since then, when she won in 2004, stepping outside from the inside role, she, by the way, ran against a former mayor and state legislator. All right. Thank you, Madam Commissioner, for showing us that women can. Women can. And um, she didn't just win by the skin of her teeth. She won by 20%. A landslide. Yeah, that must have been nice. <laughs> okay, but uh, <laughs> but all of those who voted for her uh, see what we all see today, that she is an incredibly honest, earnest, compassionate public service who always leads with her heart and with her incredible mind. She has led this community like no one else before her, uh, and now this gentleman has those big shoes to fill. I think that's why he paints them pretty colors, so <laughs> you can step into it. <laughs> and actually, those shoes kind of match your, your outfit today, Commissioner. <laughs> so uh, when I was Commissioner uh, for six years, serving alongside this wonderful lady, she led the way on so many important, important things, and I just followed in her wake on affordable housing, on economic development, on jobs, on helping people have second chances. These are some of the great things that this commissioner has, has fought for. Uh, she, let me talk to you personally. You are a principal, steadfast leader. You are willing to compromise and accomplish great things, but you do it in a way where you make sure that those who need justice will get justice. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So uncompromising in your values and in your beliefs. Everybody always knew what you stood for, and you said it with great grace, I have to say. I'm really, I'm really, I'm going to go back and listen to some more tapes. <laughs> so I have learned so much from your leadership, and I know some of the others here have as well. You have dedicated so much of your life to us, to our community, and we are doing just a small part right here to recognize you forever, forever for that service. So for generations to come, who will maybe, you know, 50 years from now, they'll say, Mom, who was that Barbara Jordan? And 
they'll say a great, great lady who worked so hard to make this community better for all of us. Thank you so much. I'm so proud to be here celebrating with you. And to my colleagues who joined from the cities, from the commission, from the county government, we love you, Barbara. Thank you to Thank you to one of my sheroes, Mayor Daniela Levine Kava. Thank you so much for those beautiful words for Commissioner Barbara Jordan. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to some, but most of us know who exactly who he is, the Miami Dade Vice Chairman. Commissioner Oliver Gilbert. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is a very exciting day for not just for Commissioner Jordan, but for all of us, right? Yeah. So, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, you know, I, I, I'm here, I'm Oliver Gilbert, the, the new commissioner for District One, but there's some folks in the audience here that I think we have to recognize. Commissioner Keone McGee is here. Yeah. Give him a round of applause. Yeah. Commissioner John Monastein is here. Yeah. He has on the cool Ray Ban glasses. I couldn't pass the chance to talk about it. Commissioner Eileen Higgins yeah. is here. Yeah. I also see some elected officials from Obalaka. Of course, former mayor, former commissioner Kelly. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Commissioner Davis, Commissioner Burke, and of course, Mayor Pigott. And then my mayor, the mayor of the city of Miami Garden, Rodney Harris is here, as well as Councilman Robert Stevens. Uh, you know, I won't belabor the point. I'll just say that I grew up in so many ways. Oh, wait, and Commissioner John Riley is also here also. I just looked up and saw the nice curly gray hair, too. And Commissioner, Commissioner Dottie John, there you go. We got like a whole, you could have a quorum over two decades here right now. Like you could pass stuff 10 years ago. It's important. Yeah. Oh, we got the mayor. We got, we got the mayor. Oh, 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 this, oh my frat brother. The, the dean of all mayors, yeah, like, in yeah, the entire yeah. state of Florida. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this lot green mayor. But he's sitting on the front row right there next to the commissioner, because that's our that's how older brother. Yeah. <laughs> he has the gray hair, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a thing. Um, And I, I see Mary, from Mayor Taylor just arrived. This is like, wow. Turned into a whole situation, y'all. Um, entanglement. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Commissioner McGee. I'm gonna stop right now. I'm gonna behave. Um, no. Okay. So I, I grew up. My dad's church was on on the bab, at Alibaba Freewell Baptist. And so, growing up, I didn't know what Alibaba was. I didn't. I knew like I saw the little Sinbad bad commercials and stuff. I didn't. But this was my reference. This is altogether appropriate. That when people come to this intersection, they will actually know the person. You, you, you're not just a historical figure. You're a contemporaneously relevant figure. You're, you're, you're people, kids who are in college who went through Head Start because of you. <laughs> there, are, there are people who, who would have, kids who would have gone the wrong way, but got jobs and turned around and they're building lives now because of you. There are people who have homes instead of being perpetual renters because of you. There are small businesses that have prospered that you helped start. There are careers that you helped launch. There are interns that are all over corporate America, all over government, because you thought it not robbery to actually do something. Not just be elected, but to actually do something. So, so when I see this, this street, the name, the BAB is important, 37 is important, but it's important that we actually recognize someone who actually gave herself to this community, not just as an elected official, but it's a public service. That's what you did. And, and it's important that we do this now because so often we have these conversations and we have them in homegoing ceremonies. And we'll call them a celebration, but it's always tinged with sadness 
because they're no, no longer with us. You are with us. You continue to help us. You continue to lead. I appreciate you on behalf of District 1. I appreciate you for sitting next to me all those times in TPO and making me behave. <laughs> I know you all thought he wasn't really behaving, but I really was. It was all because she was sitting there pinching me, saying, no, don't do that. Don't do no, Okay, now you can do that. Like, I, I appreciate your, your, your silent stewardship and guidance of me personally. I thank you personally. Thank you on behalf of this district, and, and congratulations. I'll be like uh, the mayor and not need any assistance coming down. <laughs> not there yet. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman, um, Commissioner Oliver Gilbert. At this time, I have the honor to bring my mayor of the great city of Opalaga, Mayor Matthew Pikett. This is beautiful to see everyone here today. Give yourselves a round of applause. Good morning or good afternoon. Welcome to the city of Opelika. On behalf of all the people, all my elected officials, the dignitaries, I want to welcome you to the city of Opa Tisha Waka Laka. I want to thank all those dignitaries that have come in from the Border County Commission, from my neighboring sister city, Miami Gardens, from the city of Opelika, past and present, to come here for this sacred. This ceremony where we will etch into the annals of Opelika history a woman whose journey through this world has impacted this community so much so that we will name a piece of this land after her. For thousands of years, people just like you and I have took the honor of naming land after people and significant others. And there's no one more deserving than Commissioner Barbara Jordan. <laughs> this land that we currently stand upon has been inhabited by thousands of years by people just like us. The farthest that we know is the Tequesta who lived here and had an empire all across South Florida and the Caribbean that lived right here on this land before they were exterminated by the colonists. And then the Seminoles, this group of self-liberated Africans and Native Americans who were escaping colonial Haitian came to this land, Opa, Tisha, Waka, Laka, as a haven. The name is called, it's, it's reminiscent of an island that was surrounded by swamp. For those that don't know, majority of this land has I-95, all swamp land. But this land right here in Opelika rose above the swamps. And it was a haven for the Seminoles. That's why they called it Opa, Tisha, Waka, Laka. So when I found that Glenn Curtis came upon this land, and saw the potential. And for those that don't know, Glenn Curtis literally in the aviation industry. While Wright Brothers um, took the first flight, it was Glenn Curtis who built the planes that gave America his wings to fly. And when he came to this land right here, he believed that this could be great and built Opelika as one of the oldest cities here Miami-Dade County. He was so inspired by a people across the waters called Moor, who civilized Europe, these African Muslims that civilized Europe and brought roads and streets, 
gave us the thousand and one nights. Uh, they named this land after the Moor. So I know a lot of us drive through Opelika and we hear the names Alibaba and Commissioner uh, Vice Chairman Gilbert said. But this is significant. This piece of land that we're going to name Commissioner Barbara Jordan Way is at the intersection of 37th and Alibaba. Alibaba comes from the name of the hero of Thousand and One Night, um, who coined the term open sesame, to open up the trust that we will name this piece after Commissioner Barbara Jordan. See, my um, interaction with Commissioner Barbara Jordan comes from when I first came back home as a young man, as a community organizer. And I don't know if she knows this, but she was the first elected official I ever met with formally. And at the time, she was doing what she do. We were literally at the tail end of a campaign. I was working for an organization called People Acting for Community Together, a huge religious organization um, that comes together to hold elected officials accountable. We're the ones that point the finger and say, well, you need to do this, you need to do that. Um, and we had that meeting with Commissioner Barbara Jordan. And I was struck because it wasn't antagonistic. Commissioner Barbara Jordan was a champion for the first source ordinance here in Miami-Dade County, which said and told the county that if there's any contracts that are awarded by the county, they have to use Miami-Dade County residents first. And she championed that. And I'll never forget every single meeting. It was a long battle to get, get, get that in, into the book. She would come with her uh, packed mug and she would sit it right there on the dais so that everybody knew where she stood when it comes to this ordinance and also people acting for community together. Since that time, I had the honor of going to her when I first was seeking office. When I became the elected official, I wasn't never thought about being an elected official ever. I kind of filed on the last day and once I filed, people uh, called me up. You know what you're getting yourself into? What's going on? You need to talk to the right people. And they sent me to Commissioner Jordan. And at the time, she looked at me. And I don't know if you know, sometimes Commissioner Jordan is not all the way too pleased. She'll press a look. look. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, some people remember that. And she looked at me like that. Who is this young man thinking he about to come in the over life? <laughs> and she was literally like, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> but she was dead bad. And even as becoming the elected official, her mentorship was literally the rock for guiding me through these waters. And that speaks to her impact is just me as one individual, all the people that are here today, her impact on realistic one-on-one -on -one meetings and support that she's given. Even at times, because as a young elected official, naive and experienced people, sometimes experienced folks look sideways that unexperienced people move. That, that happens. And even during those times, Commissioner Barbara Jordan was always there for this community, no matter what. When we had issues, a public health crisis here in this city, when we need our trash picked up, uh, Commissioner Barbara Jordan was there and, and leveraged the whole county to make sure that we had what we needed in Oak saving our residents over $125 on their annual taxes. When we had a water building crisis here in the city of Oak Commissioner Barbara Jordan was there to make sure that all of our water meters were replaced in the city of Oklahoma. When we were doing roads, the largest road construction project throughout the city of Oklahoma, Commissioner Barbara Jordan said the county is going to also be there. And you can see these new roads right here and see what she's done here in the city of Oklahoma. Time and time and time again. Right behind me, we have the largest Amazon distribution factory um, in South Florida. That factory can 
contributed to Ogallock during this time about in a financial oversight, $1.6 million per hour tax base every single year. And who led that? Who made it happen? Commissioner Barbara Jordan. And I was just reminded with the uh, Greater Service Court, we're actually in the process of a whole beautification campaign. And we are literally pulling up on the Greater Miami Service Court to be there. So again, Commissioner Barbara Jordan is here. So this isn't just a recognition of an honor of a woman who walked in journey in the county hall. This is literally a respect of this community, honoring and acknowledging and consecrating in our land the work that she has done for this community. And I'm so honored, Commissioner Barbara Jordan, to be the mayor, to be the head of this city, to have this honor to, to speak to your work here in the city of Opelaka. And I know Commissioner Joseph Kelly has a long, much longer history <laughs> can attest to much more that you have done. But this is going to make sure that all of our children, all the people that drive through Opelika will look up and see this Commissioner Barbara Jordan's name every time they drive through this city. And that is an honor that I'm so happy that my colleagues in the city of Opelika make sure we give to you. Thank you, Commissioner Barbara Jordan. And thank you to everyone that's been here. This is the most ideal representation of the executive officials that we can have. And I just thank you. Thank you very much. Just want to, a uh, side note, um, want to honor um, Commissioner Katrina Wilson, who is also here. Thank you. Want to make sure we get everyone, recognize everyone. The sound guy said I was too short, so gave me my own microphone. So I told him I thought Oliver Gilbert and I were the same height, but apparently not. At all, says. <laughs> Next up, I have the extreme pleasure of hearing from a gentleman who had this vision for today and presented the ordinance to begin the process for this co-designation ceremony. What an amazing individual, former commissioner. Please help me as I welcome former commissioner of the great city and mayor of the great city of Opelika, the Reverend Joseph Kelly. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, please allow me a point of uh, privilege. Uh, I want to ask a former mayor, uh, Taylor, Mr. Riley, Mr. Johnson, uh, to come up and to stand with me. They were on the commission prior to some of the things that occurred. Um, so I want to just have them come up. I know we got a social distance. Um, but uh, I wanted to acknowledge them and also acknowledge Commissioner Burke and Commissioner Davis over there and the other commissioners that are here. Um, I have something wrote down that I wanted to say, but I, I got to go back to um, something my mom said years ago. She said, it's a poor frog that don't praise his own palm. Growing up, I didn't know what that really meant. But she would always say, especially at home goings, as uh, Vice Chair said, you got to praise that frog. You got to recognize that palm while they can still know it. Today, Commissioner, we celebrate you. We can talk about infrastructure. We can talk about 
of so many things that you've done in the city with economic development and technical support and, and all those things. We can talk about that. But what I want to really say to you today is to thank you for keeping the main thing the main thing. You always remember the least, the lost, and the left out. And so today we salute you. We thank you for all of your service to the great city of Opelika. It was my honor, my pleasure, and I thank the current commission and mayor for supporting the effort to co-designate and honor you. We love you. You'll always have a place here in the great city of Opelika. God bless you. Someone said that it couldn't be done, but he, with a chuckled reply, that maybe it couldn't, but he would be one who wouldn't say so until he tried. So he buckled right in with the trace of a grin on his face. If he were worried, be done. And guess what? Commissioner Barbara J. Jordan, you did it. Let's give everyone a round of applause. We stand on the shoulders of everyone that is here that was up here. Um, and, and it's just a beautiful sight. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to bring to the stage someone who knows Commissioner Barbara Jordan very well. Join me in welcoming Florida City Mayor, Mr. Otis Wallace. ceremony, so many wonderful accolades for my wonderful sister. I'd like to first recognize, though she's been recognized, my favorite mayor, the determined but compassionate Mayor Pava. Thank you so much for simply seeing you. I see my friend, Commissioner Monastime over there, Commissioner for All Seasons. Um, Commissioner Higgins, we're going to get to know each other real soon, starting today. <laughs> and I must, must recognize my commissioner, the hardest working man in show business, <laughs> Committee on <Tione> McGee. <laughs> I'd like to thank you, take this time to thank our vice chairman of the county commission, the right and honorable. Oliver Gilbert for participating in this wonderful ceremony for my sister. I'd like to also reach out to the, the new and dynamic mayor of the city of Opelika and the entire Opelika City Commission for the wonderful and touching gesture you make here today. On behalf of the family, we appreciate all of you. And said that good fruit never fall too far from the tree. So in our family, as our grandparents passed on and our mother passed on, Papa willingly took up the role of matriarch, leader of our family. I'm only there today because of the admiration and respect and leadership she showed us as little kids. She was the first in our family to go to college. So I knew I had to go. And all of us had to go as a result of your leadership. But one of the things that Barbara learned in her role as matriarch of the family, and I think it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an attribute that served her well as a county commissioner. She understood that the greatest gift a public servant could give to the people she served was to let them know she simply cared. And I and that's simple. But a lot of 
politicians don't know that. But all the state statesmen, statesmen do know it. Barbara simply cared for us, her family, and when she later became the District 1 Commissioner, her family simply expanded. And she cared very much for the people of District 1. I know because she told me so. I know that she spoke of you to all of us in glowing terms. I know, Opalaka, how she felt about helping you. It was a mission. I know, County Commissioners, how fierce she fought for things that she believed in. She's a tough lady to deal with when she believes in something with her soul. And she believes in service to the community with her soul. So I think that in the future, for many generations to come, I look forward to the day when little kids and generations to come will say, once there was a time, once upon a time, there was a public servant who so graciously served the people that she cared about that history simply demanded that she be remembered. And the action you take here today will assure that my big sister, I wouldn't dare call her my older sister, that my big sister, you know, deserves all the, all the accolades that she got here today. Just we love you. You're the shining example. I don't know what I ever told you before. But I remember that first election 36 years ago, well, when I ran for mayor of Florida City, my big sister was there knocking on doors and pushing me on. And her hard work inspired me. She's always been my hero and will continue to be. She may have retired now from the county commission, but she'll always love and serve you. Sis, thanks so much for simply being you. It doesn't get any better than that. Thank you. And yeah, Gilbert talked about my gray hair, but at least I got here. for you. All the sorrows of Delta Sigma Theta in the house. And, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what a great morning we've had thus far. You would agree? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. It has truly been a beautiful day and a wonderful occasion to honor Commissioner Barbara Jordan. I would like to introduce someone who has been by her side for the past 16 years, her former chief of staff, Mr. Andre Reagan. And um, little did I know she was grooming me, she was watching me 
before the time when uh, Sam would leave. And, and that went on for several months. And when Sam did finally leave, she offered me the job. And the uh, best decision I ever made to take that job. It changed my life. It changed my career path. It changed everything. And um, it was so great working for Commissioner Jordan, ACM Jordan at the time. And uh, fast forward three or four years, she was about to retire. And uh, I was looking for my next career opportunity. And Commissioner Ferguson was also about to retire. She asked Commissioner Jordan to uh, consider running. She thought about it for a few days and she decided to run. She calls me in the office one day and says, uh, when I win, when I win, you're my chief of staff. So I'm like, chief of staff, okay, I, I guess I'm your chief of staff. Now in my mind, I'm saying, what the hell is the chief of staff? <laughs> I didn't know what that was, but I couldn't tell her that. Um, if you know Commissioner Jordan, like I know Commissioner Jordan, and, and I know a lot of people in this, in this audience know her this way. Then she doesn't take no for an answer. Hence uh, how I got on the program today. <laughs> you know, I, was, I was not given an option to be up here. You know, I'm more of a behind the scenes guy. But she said I had to do this. So here I am. She's the only one who get me to do this kind of stuff. And uh, like I said, fast forward. Um, she wins the election, obviously, by a landslide. And um, in every election after that, she wins by landslide, in my opinion. And, uh, I had the privilege of being her one and only chief of staff for her whole tenure, for her entire tenure. So do the quick math on that. That's 16 years at the commission, four years in the manager's office. I worked for this woman for 20 years. That just doesn't happen. I mean, that's, you don't see that every day, so she must be special, right? 20 years, same person. And uh, can you believe throughout that whole 20 years, we never had one disagreement. No, I'm lying. We fought, we fought all the time. You know, always with love and respect and behind closed doors. Staff never really saw it, but we, we fought all the time. Uh, she would call me the next day laughing about it or crying about it or laughing and crying about it. And we would pick up. You know, our bond was strong enough to, to withstand those types of situations. And quite frankly, we needed it sometimes. But she didn't always want to hear the, the truth sometimes. She would think about it the next day and say, you, you were right, you know. She didn't always want to hear that, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't a yes man. I'm going to tell her my opinion. That's what she came before. And so we would fight and then we would make up. Um, but the journey was great. Uh, I wouldn't change anything. It wasn't the term limits I'd still be working for. That's not, over the years, it just felt like that I was there to protect her. And so I, I had offered to leave years ago, and I never really wanted to leave. That's how, how strong our bond was. I'm not going to be emotional of this. Uh, um, but, uh, so she's watched me grow and helped me grow into the person and professional that I am today. I appreciate it. We've been through so much together in trials and tribulations, family tragedies. We've been through it all. Uh, she moved from a supervisor to a mentor to more like a mother to me, um, especially after my mother passed away. So. I cherish all of those memories. She's always had my back. She says, she likes to say I had her back. I'm her left hand. We're both left handed. <laughs> but uh, she's always had my back. You've always had my back. And I'll, never, I'll never forget that. Um, you've heard of all the different accolades and the different attributes. I mean, her passion, which is co work and feisty. Uh, she's very, she's very feisty. And, uh, you know, she has a big heart. I love the way she loves her family. Um, all of those attributes are great. But what stood out to me the most, what I was most impressed with was her integrity. And you heard some of that here today. Um, she's going to always stand up for what she believes in, even when it's not popular. Yes, um, but you're going to know what side she's on. She's going to tell you straight up, this is my position. She's going to defend that position and support that position almost to the death. <laughs> so she's very tenacious. And um, that's what I admire the most about her. Uh, I've seen her fight for a lot many, many times. When people told her to stay out of Oblock, Oblock is too hot. Yeah. Oblock is about to cold. Yeah. Let's leave and be. Yeah. So they're going to they're take care of themselves. Yeah. They say, no, I'm going to help Oblock. The residents deserve better. Um, the city asked me for help. I'm going to help them. So, you know, that's who Commissioner Jordan is to me in a nutshell. Um, 
champion for those who can't fight for themselves. And um, that's what I always remember. Um, in closing, I just want to say, this is you know, how I feel about you. Everybody here knows how I feel about you. Uh, I'm proud of you. Um, your legacy and your impact is going to live on for decades. Your impact on my life and my family is it's, it's huge in itself. And uh, I'm just glad I could have been a small part of that legacy. And uh, like I said, on behalf of uh, myself and my family, on behalf of, of some of Team Jordan, which I see here today, some of the former staff of Commissioner Jordan, like Ryan likes to call Barbara's baby, uh, <laughs> call herself Team Jordan. And yeah, I'm sure each one of them can tell you, you know, how she's impacted their growth and development as well. Uh, so I want to thank them for being here today, too. Uh, but your legacy, like I said, your impact is going to live on forever. Um, you know, we appreciate you, uh, we thank you, and we love you. Thank you again, Mr. Andre Reagan. Please let's bring to the stage someone who holds a fond place in the commissioner's heart. That is none other than the director and chief executive officer of Miami-Dade Aviation Department, Mr. Lester Solo. Sola. Sola. So what a, an honor. So I'll give you a different perspective. I'm a mayor, vice chair, commissioners. Barbara Jordan was my boss many years ago. And she petrified me. <laughs> Straight out of graduate school, working for a, another dear friend, Marsha Jackson. We were running the small business program. We were going to fight for every single small business. And through that journey, we ended up probably having one of our biggest disappointments, which is when the race and gender program got struck down. We were in that courtroom. And I, get, I still get emotional uh, about that. And, and lo and behold, it was a loss. But within weeks, within weeks, thanks to you, we had another program. Today, we, we pause and honor you for so many accomplishments, whether it be the championing, and you keep hearing that word throughout everyone's speeches, for small businesses, people in need. This airport is a product of your work yes, and effort. Sir. This airport that you see here with hundreds and thousands of jobs is the model for all of our other general aviation airports because of the work the work that you put in. So it is it, it is fitting that we pause in our every single time, even when she went from being an administrator to an assistant county manager to a commissioner. I consider you a friend, but every time there was an agenda item and you called me to my office, I was a little scared. <laughs> because no matter what we were doing, you wanted more. You wanted contracts to be broken, we wanted more opportunities. And when staff, you knew how the county worked, it was easier to manage one contract, you pushed to break those contracts into smaller pieces. And as a result of that, more people in this community got opportunities. So for me, it, it, it's, it's, it's an honor to have joined you in that journey in doing what is not just right, but doing what is good. So this street, and it's so appropriate that it's not a street, it's not an avenue, but it's a way. Because that word way, it's your way. And we're not honoring, we're not honoring just an administrator. We're not honoring a county commissioner. We're honoring someone who stood in the corner, in the corner with everyone that ever needed a hand. You did great for your constituents, but you did
did it mostly for this entire community. And for that, I thank you wholeheartedly and wish you all the best. Thank you, Mr. Lester Sosa. Sola. I would like to bring to the stage Greater Miami Service Corps Board Chair, Mr. Lonnie Lawrence, an organization Commissioner Barbara Jordan knows far too well as she served as its first director, Mr. Lonnie Lawrence. Okay. See that I am what standing in between the dedication and on the set. I'm going to make it quick. But before I do that, I'd like to say it's a pleasure seeing some this commission. She hasn't always been this commissioner. I served with her at the Things that happened that we probably both would have gotten in trouble about, but we, we planned them, we talked about them. And every now and then we had a little secret meeting place, Publix. And for those of you who weren't about the Sunshine Law, we weren't elected. We were servants. But we talked about things. And why I'm here today is I want to say to you that some mention has been made about these young people. But what she did in working to get Greater Miami Service Corps established is more beneficial in my mind than a lot of things because she saved them from a system that didn't do anything but prepare them for failure. She did things to prepare them for success. When you talk about educational programs, vocational programs, these are the kinds of things that make a difference these are the kinds of things that are going to stop our young people from killing each other. These are the kinds of things that are going to keep our young people from being the most young people in these facilities. This program, I can tell you, as a matter of fact, I think, if I'm not mistaken, one of our county commissioners is a former participant in our program, Mr. McGee. So, so you can see it can take you to heights if you get in the program and, and participate like you're supposed to. She know I love her and we want to make sure that you know from the service board, the board of directors, the staff, uh, and our, our, my wonderful executive director, Debbie Dorsett, how much we appreciate all the things that you have done and continue to do for young people, not just people. I want to make sure we understand young people because that's where it is. We love you and we have a little presentation for you. Instead of the mug sitting on, on the table, you can sit down on the table and they really know you mean business. <laughs> and the presentation reads, Greater Miami Service Corps extends our deepest appreciation to Commissioner Barbara J. Jordan, 
District 1, Miami-Dade County Board of Commissioners, for your outstanding dedication and support to the young people of Miami-Dade County. We love you. And we appreciate everything that you've done. This is our 31st year of being in existence. And I can tell you of all the programs, and you know this, that was started back then, of the 12 programs, Commissioner Jordan understood what it would take for this program to survive. There are only three, and Greater Miami Service Corps is one of them. So we thank you for, for having the foresight and knowing what this program would take to survive. We love you. Thank you very much. I would like to call back to the stage Mayor Daniela Levine Cava, Vice Chairman Oliver Gilbert, Mayor Matthew Pygott, Commissioner Joseph Kelly, and our honoree, who is all on our hearts and minds, the Miss Commissioner Barbara Jordan for the official unveiling of Commissioner Barbara Jordan Wayne. At this time, if we can get all the commissioners to join us. All commissioners from all cities, if you're here, please join us at this time. Are we ready? Barbara 
because of everybody who's here and every word that was said, it means so much to me because I heard people speaking from their hearts, not just from a script. This is a community that I love dearly and Opalaka, you became so special to me, especially when the state appointed an overseer who came back with a report for a city that was not even given a chance to me to turn itself around, came back with a report saying to abolish the city. And the city was on the verge of celebrating, I think, was it 90 years? Huh? 90 years. The oldest black community in the United States, practically. But there was so much determination in order to try and make things right with the elected officials with the city. And in spite of the oversight committee, Things were turned around. And I want to commend Commissioner, then Mayor, actually Taylor, for sponsoring an item that provided term limits. <laughs> One of you. <laughs> the mayor said it in her speech. And Dottie sponsored it. Sponsored the item that basically started term limits for the city of Opalaga to bring other talent in and give an opportunity for Opalaga to see how it could grow. And of course, because of that, Opalaga has really grown tremendously and turned itself around. I can't thank enough everybody who has spoken. Mayor Daniela Levine, Collins, our passion together for social services started out very early when I was an assistant county manager, and you've never lost that passion for caring for people. I want to say that I've always appreciated you and appreciated the fact of your commitment and dedication, and I know that in your heart you have the best interest of the community and that you will do the right thing, and integrity will always be at the front of whatever you do, and I appreciate you. And of course, my successor, my successor, <laughs> was before he was my successor, he was my mayor. And we had so much growth in the city of Miami Gardens under his leadership. Right, right now, we have housing development going up in the city of, of Miami Gardens that he started. He put into works as the mayor of the city of Miami. When they passed the bond issue, a number of projects that are coming along, and I am so proud, and I was proud to support him to be my successor on the Board of County Commissioners, because the one thing that I wanted, whoever succeeded me couldn't be a potted plant. It couldn't be anybody who just sit up there and not say anything. You had to take a had to take a position. However, however, he was still in training when I got elected. So he's right. When we served on the board together for <laughs> transportation, I did kick him under the table <laughs> and, and took him out to the tool shed a couple of times. You know, 
there are so many things that happen during the election process. And I just want to say that everyone who has supported me has supported me uh, in a way that I felt it was a commitment and a dedication. My brother, my brother, the mayor of the city of Florida City, has been in elected office since he graduated, before he graduated from law school. He started out serving on the city commission. And of course, during that time, we didn't have black people on the city commission. But he went from there to becoming the mayor of Florida City. And when I first ran for office, he said, Since, do you know what you're doing? <laughs> do you know what you're doing? Because, you know, you are making an opportunity to get out there and it's going to take time away from your life to do what you want to do. And he was my role model for me to get out there and do it. What Andre Reagan, let me tell you, he called me, he said, Commissioner, they called me about being on the program. I told him no. I said, oh, you want me to let you off the hook? That's all I had to say. And he did a wonderful job. Give it a hand. Lester Sola helped to educate me about small business development and everything related to small business development. He is a person who has come up through the ranks of county government. And I'm telling you, he is one of the most trustworthy people you, you can ever get to know. And he is dedicated to helping small businesses to grow. I am so happy that you're at the airport, Lester, because I know that you're going to look out for small businesses and you're going to help every ethnic group be an equal participant to the extent that they can. It was already stated that Greater Miami Service Corps, and I've always told everybody, when I started Greater Miami Service Corps after I left there, anybody asked me, what is your legacy? Greater Miami Service Corps. Greater Miami Service Corps. It will always be Head Start and Greater Miami Service Corps. But I just want to thank all of you. But I'd like to, before I close out, I'd like for my daughter to stand. Um, my granddaughter and her four babies are back there waving. I'd like for my family to stand. My brother, my sister, my niece, and they're all here. My brother-in-law. Family has always been first. First. So thank everybody for being here and thanks for this honor. I really appreciate it. And I do want to say what makes it so special too, as well as the, the health center, it was unsolicited and a surprise. <laughs> unsolicited and a surprise, which tells me it came from the heart. Thank you so much, everybody, for being a part. And Mr. Mayor, thank you too. Thank you. Now we have. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Once again, we really want to make sure we thank former Commissioner and Mayor, Mr. Joseph Kelly, for bringing this tournament. Have a safe journey, everyone. <laughs>